Welcome to Beyond Impressions from Marketron. I'm Jeannie Selvage and I'm a sales engineer over here at Marketron. Today we're going to be talking about yield management with our guest, Adam Lang, an expert in this space. Adam has a career spanning three decades in media, from the music industry to TV and radio. He has extensive experience using yield management in media, helping increase margins by up to 15%. He currently acts as a consultant to many companies in the media industry through his company, Relativity Consulting. Adam, it's great to see you again and interesting that we're doing these uh, interviews now virtually rather than face to face. It's great to see you too, Jeannie, and thank you for having me on this podcast. It's uh... It's a great topic. As you know, I love talking about it. So I'm happy to meet virtually in real time, in place, or just like this. It's uh, good to see you again. Fantastic. And look, I'm sure our audience will be really interested to hear why should local TV and radio have urgency around yield management? So it's like setting off on any journey. If you're going to get somewhere, it's really helpful to have your navigation systems ready. You've got to have your plan for your journey ahead. And as a business, as you know, you have to know where you're going and how you're going to get there. So what we've seen in recent years is that the weather has been difficult, right? There have been some remarkable, challenging economic situations. And we expect the year ahead will be really interesting too. It's hard to see how it'll pan out in every market, but it's unlikely to be easy. And yield, yield management to me and in my experience is the best way you can have to get the right price for the right client at the right time in any market. And it'll give you the best returns in any year. But as we expect it to be an interesting year ahead, spending could be flat or it may even decrease. You know, over the year ahead, we, we see that over the air spots for television and radio are probably going to be a bit challenging. Broadcast radio is only expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of about 1.9%. That's 2022 to 2028. So that's a short, medium and long term outlook. Uh, that's 1.9%. So in the year ahead, broadcast television, on the other hand, might actually get a 3% drop in 2023 calendar 2023 so those are the predictions that we see ahead and it's it's unlikely to be easy and my experience just shows me that yield management in any market is the right thing to do that's really interesting those figures i i hadn't uh, specifically heard them before um can you yeah, tell me can i just add a couple of brief things sorry to, to interrupt but yeah something that's typical in the USA cycle, not typical everywhere, but the election cycle, it's going to be different in mm -hmm. 2023. So we're not going to have that same year on year history mm. in the year ahead across the United States. There's also globally and true in America as well, uh, dollars moving from analog to digital. So we've seen, especially over the top media, uh, that's been achieve achieving impressive growth for vendors and it can reach those cord cutters in the audience as they're, as they're known. <laughs> and the ideal way to raise revenue when you sort of look at the overall outlook and those individual factors to America, digital, over the top, raising revenue is always a challenge. But if you base it on data and meeting the market with the right demand, with the right price, and that's really called yield management, Media companies can use that to their advantage. And so I'd really encourage everyone who's watching or listening to this podcast to consider that for their business. Okay, great. And so I've heard a lot about yield management and dynamic pricing. Is okay. there a difference yeah. between dynamic pricing and yield management? Yes. And look, those terms can be used interchangeably, but... Really, the experts are saying the data drives a different understanding. And so essentially dynamic pricing is a subset of yield management. So overall yield management is the commercial trading framework that you have in place. It begins with your revenue goals 
and your available commercial airtime. And then you're looking at things, well, how are you gonna, how are you gonna drive prices? Are you looking at higher audience areas and asking for a higher price in those areas? Do you look at different demographics and times of the day, commanding different premiums? Do you use sponsorships? Do you use commercial exclusivity zones? Those are the sort of macro settings that yield management is involved with. They typically are set in the medium and longer term, and you can review them each week, but the, the yield management is the overall landscape for your trading. And then within that, Dynamic pricing is that live arena. That dynamic pricing works within yield management. So you've got real-time supply, real-time demand, influencing pricing. And the basis for that is set up within your system. So basically, dynamic pricing is a subset of yield management. Yield management is the overall settings and dynamic pricing is that live demand and supply trading environment. Okay, terrific. That sounds like an awful lot of data. Do we have a data prop in yield management? How exactly do we cope with all of that data? Uh, like a data indigestion problem, right? <laughs> so, Indeed. No, it, and you, that is possible. I think sometimes we can be overwhelmed with data, but great systems will use great data to be intuitive. And that's really one of the, the benefits of the REV system. And so if you think about what we were talking about before, yield management and dynamic pricing. Imagine all the data going into that and that real-time supply and demand for your commercial inventory. Rev can update the real-time supply and demand every 30 minutes. And that's a big differentiator. You know, if you're using a system to take all that complexity of data, Rev does it in real time. And I think that that's really don't think about too much about the overwhelming nature of data or becoming getting that data indigestion. Look at what a system can do for you in terms of intuitively leading your decisions around commercial inventory. So I think that's really important to know. And essentially the barriers, you know, the barriers to data and where the problems are created is poor access to data. So the ease with which you can get that information that you need to know. Technology, as we know, is not always user friendly, especially if you have to use uh, an older traffic system to look at available airtime data. I've not found many sale sellers that love traffic systems in my experience. And <laughs> no. the older those systems tend to be, the more challenging they can be to get the data you need in, in real time and easily. And so older systems, uh, complicated structures can be a barrier for sales adoption. There's also an issue where you just don't get enough of the data you need and too much of the data you don't need and it's not real time. So as we talked about with yield management and dynamic pricing, as we know with sellers, media is a live trading environment. So you have to have it up to date and you've got to be able to access it easily. And so I think those are two of the challenges I would say from the vendor side, if we're talking about sales executives, sales managers, directors, and so on, they might think, oh, we can't just leave unfettered access to this inventory, to the data. We've got to have some guardrails in place so that we know as a business, we're going to hit our revenue targets. We've got to have some parameters that we can control to make sure we're keeping this selling team, selling the inventory we want at the price we need. And that too is within the system. Those guardrails can be put in and that's really the framework of yield management and dynamic pricing working together. So that's that's really an interesting point, I think. Um, when you start talking about guardrails and the data, then you're really starting to set yourself up for more of an automated yield management environment as opposed to, uh, you know, data scientist, I guess. And I guess that, that would be a really interesting question for some of our audience is, what are your views on automation compared to the expertise that a data scientist can give you with yield management? Uh, so that that is a great question. And I think that they both, the short answer is they both work really well together. Um, it's not volume of data you need, it's the right data. Mm -hmm. And data scientists, can help you do that. But 
really data scientists can be hard to get. They have to be available to you when you need them. And so I think that that comes into play where you've got the system like Rev where you've got, those decisions can be made. The guardrails can be put in place. And then you can look within the system to give you the data you need anytime you want it. Mm. So you're not reliant on, a, some, on someone being available to you at the time you need to do the analysis. Mm. The system can provide the data you need. The guardrails can be in place and everyone can have access to the information that they need. So look, I, have, I, I would say that I've dabbled in being a data scientist myself. Um, I am a bit nerdy with data <laughs> because in essence, it helps you do the job you need to do, make the right pricing decision at the right time for the right client. But inevitably, everyone needs access to that at the time that suits them, not that suits a single data scientist. So. My view is the best thing to do is to have rules that are understood, data that is available and together, everyone can have access to that as and when they need it, as and when their clients need it. Perfect. Okay. That's really good to know. And it, it's a great point. The expertise really does need to be available when you need it. And I know myself since the pandemic, working hours are now all hours, day or night. It can be any time, not necessarily on other people's schedules. So. It's a good point. Yeah. We're, we're truly a global marketplace, right? We and are. so um, in the United States alone, you can have multiple different time zones at any one stage that you're selling in or across. Yeah. And so if you have a system that can speak to that, that can tell you the information you need to know, need to know that real time availability of commercial inventory, where it's not complicated to access, for a seller, you know, that they don't have to go into a complicated traffic system. They can have access to the to the information they need for their clients and make a great decision for them, make a great recommendation. Yeah, great. There's even once you have those in there, there's optimization tools that can do a lot of heavy lifting for you and prompt you for the things that you may not even immediately see, saying, Hey, have you thought about this? Mm -hmm. Have you looked at that? So it's not just the accessibility and and the right ease of use it's also it can prompt you to help you do your job that that optimizer tool is really useful and i guess one of the greatest things that i've seen in my career is that it is not complicated to induct people into mm -hmm. this you know it's not the sort of technology we go okay everybody off the tools we're going to need a week's training here mm -hmm. it, it is it is not a heavy technology installation it does take expertise to get it set up and right but once you've done that your sellers the people who are going to be using this it doesn't take a long time to get them going and mm -hmm. to support them as they become used to the tool so it, to me it's got great advantage and and ease of use and will help your company overall by making that right price decision for the right client at the right time okay great and i think we've got time for one final question and that is, what do you think are the most important advantages for media companies in using yield management, particularly now in these uncertain economic times we're facing? Having traded through some of these, or well, some of uh, some uncertain economic times, you know, that I, I would say that no crisis is perhaps like one another, but there are very similar traits you know, going back through recent history, even recent years. And I know that it has helped me maximise revenue in any market, including tough markets. And when market conditions get a bit more challenging, we talked about television going through a negative three, expectation in minus 3% in the year 2023 mm. and maybe 1.9% growth over the next six, seven years for, for radio and audio. That's not going to be a straight line up or down. It's going to be bumpy. Mm. And of course, there's different seasons. And as we talked about earlier, there's a an election cycle that's not going to be present in 2023. Mm. So each year, each challenging situation is a bit different. But because you're using data real time and the systems are doing a lot of heavy lifting for you, you're able to see how the guardrails that you put in place 
you know, to meet your revenue goals in the year ahead, how they're engaging with the market real time and how your sellers are engaging with the market real time. And what I've seen is it grows revenue share for the company that, it, that is doing it well. And so it can make that big a difference. If you have stronger rating shows, lower rating shows, it can still help you maximise revenue across the portfolio. And I think the one observation I'll be really interested to see if this plays out again in the year ahead is big marketers and some small marketers tend to make very broad decisions in challenging situations like the economy's not looking good, we need to preserve profit, marketing spends are going to be under very, very close scrutiny, yeah. choose all of your media partners really carefully and that can lead to, to advertisers choosing less partners to deal with. And what you want to make sure, therefore, is that you're on that buy, that mm -hmm. you're presenting a solution across your range of inventory where some prices you might find you, some of your inventory is under high demand because people just need to lock in those premium environments, the mm -hmm. ones that they really want to reach that audience in, yeah. whereas others are not in such high demand. And so interestingly, under a challenging market, you can find premium environments sometimes command an even higher premium oh. and that of course to preserve the marketing spend and the relationship with advertisers needs to be offset and you will find areas where that demand is lower and you you can offset those prices to keep trading with those advertisers in the most effective way so there's quite a bit of kind of history going in into that but i think the the most simple distillations i can offer are uh, yield management works in any market, including including challenging environments. Mm -hmm. And it works as the sort of more macro settings around dynamic pricing, which is the more live trading envir environment on supply and demand. So I'd really encourage the people listening and watching this to, to explore it because it will assist you. Yeah. Um, Take you know, that data can of help you fuel... Take exactly take advantage of it. Those better data can help you support better negotiations with your clients, mm. even in challenging markets. That's terrific. Adam, thank you for your insights today, and thanks to our audience for joining us today. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast.